Are you ready to get the hydrofacial glow? Loved in 87 countries across the world. It's not a facial, it's a hydrofacial. Now available across the UK. Visit hydrofacial.co.uk to find your nearest location. It also has glucomannan, which is a fiber and it's soluble fiber, and it has been scientifically proven to help you lose weight. You, you might have noticed the food was like similar to the drawings. Absolutely. And, and mm -hmm. the drinks are the same as the drawings. So I, I, the next series will have that same kind of fun. Can, can I make a question then for champagne and chocolate, if I may? Mm -hmm. Ooh, well, I like so that yes. we can all share. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Friday. Anybody got anything happening on Fridays? Yes, <laughs> yes, I've got to tell you something very exciting. Oh, what? Cauliflowers have ma are making a comeback. Sherry, did you hear that? Yes. No. That's not a euphemism. No, they are making a comeback as a vegetable, because you know they went out of fashion for a long time. And uh, somebody said to me, you've got to use cauliflowers. I know you're falling asleep, but the thing is, I... honestly, please wake up because you'll be so excited when I tell you. I made the most amazing cauliflower soup. Oh, fantastic. And, um, oh, you're yawning. Sorry, so, sorry. No, we're not no. even, no, no, Dee, we're not even yawning. We are <laughs> fixed with horror. I'll put um, the recipe on for everyone to see because I'm sure I, I wonder, Sherry, if you could do a public apology for the <laughs> cauliflower story. Um, but I cauliflower. Will say I have noticed... I did pass a purple cauliflower the other day Ooh. in Tesco. So indeed they are back and there's more than one version, but it, I'm not drawn. I have roasted the odd cauliflower, I've got to be honest, yeah. but I'm not drawn to them flavor wise. It, it oh. doesn't- I, No, and they are very bad for wind. And we yes. don't need any of that, do we girls? Yeah. We know. Very true. Farting yes. cauliflowers, they're called. They're what? They're called farting cauliflowers. And I can vouch for that. <laughs> I can yes. definitely vouch for that. The only thing you can yes. do with a cauliflower is cut it up and <laughs> stick it in a pan with garlic and mm. maybe five spice and 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 uh, something else. I can't think what, what else. Onions. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> and then good. and then what you have to do is isolate yourself in a room for forty-eight hours. Yes, yeah, for a long time. <laughs> mm. And yes, so don't, get, yeah. don't sleep mm. with anybody who's had a cauliflower. Especially if you do it with garlic as well. Well, okay, we I'd rather have okay. the garlic than the cauliflower. No, listen, I'm going to have to stop. I'm going to have to stop you both. I can't do any more. Um, uh, we need to say, talking... everyone, yes. that we have pre-recorded two dear colleagues and friends yes. of the show because of their timetables. Um, but they're going to be on the show today, aren't they? Who are they, They Dee? are. And in fact, talking about um, farting and, and all the rest of it and digestion, um, the amazing... Suzanne Chalkley, who's been on our programme before as yeah, a nutritionist, yeah. Yeah. Uh, with Direct Health, she is on the show, we recorded her the other day, talking about diet and gut health, Suzanne Chalkley. So lovely to see you, darling. We're all talking at the moment about being bloated, darling. Wind. And Wind? Bloated? Well, there's lots of things that you can do to help. Um, with regard to bloating, now what are you drinking? I'm interested. Cherry? Oh, well, I mean, I I drink quite a lot of sparkling water. Yes. Well, Is that well, not that's, good? Well, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's really important to be hydrated. Um, water, whether it's still or sparkling. Do you know what the latest figures are that, that we recommend that you drink? 2.7 litres a day for a woman. Ooh, that's I can do that. that. No, I don't think I could do that. That's it seems an awful lot, but that includes your tea and your coffee. But you know, oh, like, you're eating lots of fruits and you know, got the water in the fruits as well. So hydration is really important. But back to your question on gut health. Bloating is uh, caused by a lot of foods that create um, an imbalance in bacteria in your gut. So lots of sugars and lots of uh, refined processed foods. Ah. And so, you know, your white bread and all of those, you know, your pastries, <laughs> your cakes, your biscuits, they'll all ferment in the bowel and cause you... <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, bless you. you. She was saying a few days ago that she was eating a lot of greens. And I know from myself, a lot of green stuff often incurs a lot of wind. 
Yes, well, they, they can do. They can ferment in the bowel as well. But let, let's look at the body in general. If you've got a car and you're driving somewhere, you know there's three things you need to put in that car. It needs oil, it needs water, and it needs fuel. Now, if you put the wrong fuel in the car, you're not going to go very far. So back to the body. The body's exactly the same. We need to hydrate it. The oils are the essential fatty acids, the omegas. I mean, I'm sure you've all heard of them. And they're really important, especially for women, because they help to balance hormones and they help to stop you craving. And that's, uh, that's another thing that when you get on that cycle of eating the wrong foods and too much sugars, your body will crave more. So omegas will help to stop that. The other thing is the fuel, and that's your food. So um, what, what I recommend is we try and stay away from a lot of processed, refined foods. The sugars cause you to crave more. And white bread, to give you an example, one slice of white bread is 20 grams of carbohydrate. That equates wow. to four, four teaspoons of sugar once you eat it. So what's happening in today's society are people eating far more sugars than they're aware of. Most people are eating between 60 and 70 teaspoons of sugar wow. in their food. Um, because what happens is you're eating foods that are higher in processed carbohydrates and your body will break that down into glucose which is just sugar yeah. so uh you know if you think about it your breakfast you know cereals toast etc um a bowl of cornflakes uh, will be about seven teaspoons of sugar by the time your body's broken it down but it breaks down really quickly and that's the problem for a lot of people so you're not really getting the chance to utilize that sugar before you go and eat something else there's a lot of people now going more in plant-based yes. uh, eating. Um, but what you want to do is you want to combine protein-rich foods with it. So um, a lot of vegan food is very, very healthy. But I, I do, I am concerned that there's some people that are saying, oh, I'm going um, vegetarian and vegan and just relying so heavily on carbohydrates as their, you know, as their, their bulk of their diet. Um, but that's... You know, for five grams of carbohydrates, one teaspoon of sugar. So you can actually overindulge. It's important to yeah. include protein in with that. And that'll make you feel fuller for longer. Um, another little thing that people don't realize is stress. Um, mm. It's quite a stressful environment that we're living in currently. And stress is a real it puts the blocks, it puts the brakes on fat burning. So one of the important things when people say, I want to start eating healthily, let's start by hydrating relaxing and not getting too focused um i don't even really like the word diet to be honest because people sort of jump on that like oh my god you know starting a new diet and then they worry that they've failed um because yeah. everybody is a bad day there's you know and life goes on we've got different things to go to and uh, sometimes it doesn't always work out quite the way you want to you keep but saying about protein in a in a vegetarian and vegan diet so yeah. what can you actually have as um, yeah, well, quinoa, um, you know, we, we talked about um, peas earlier, greens. I mean, peas and hemp uh, based pea protein is fabulous. Um, and then the nuts, um, lentils and legumes, all of those things are have. Yes, there's some carbohydrate, but they have protein choices <laughs> in there as well. So uh, but tofu, the, you know, the standard soya um, products as well. Yeah. So um, I've, I've actually um, a little booklet that I put on my website, which is a little freebie for all the all the ladies. So if anybody's looking for a, a, like a seven day plan just to get just to get your head right, just to get you started in a healthier. Yeah, season. it also affects my hair. Yes. You know, it makes my hair dry because yes. I'm very white and very dry and brittle. And that's when I know that I'm yes. eating the wrong things. And I was going to ask you, what about alcohol? Is uh, uh, alcohol is full of sugar? Well, wine is full of sugar, I'm assuming. Is that right? It is, unfortunately. But, you know, if you want to have a drink, um, say gin with a slim lime tonic or vodka with a slim lime tonic and just a little squeeze of lime or lemon in that. And, and that's, you know, that's OK. Again, it's it's kind of added calories. You know, if you're really wanting to do a bit of a, a, a healthy start, um, you know, I'd, I'd recommend that, you know, for at least a week, two weeks, give yourself a bit of a break. But if you are having to have a little drink, then that's what I'd recommend. Gin, slimline or vodka and right. slimline. But definitely... Okay. Uh, or a little glass of champagne. There's the, That's um, a lot less sugar than the Prosecco and the white 
Yeah, the wine. Exactly. Yeah, there, there yeah. is a sugar-free. Okay. There, there are some uh, slim wines. They're called slim wine. Yes, yes. I haven't tried them. So lovely. Uh, they're absolutely yeah, lovely. That's awful. No, oh, it's lovely, yeah. Sherry. It's really no. they're, they're, honestly, they're really <laughs> nice. They're just wine, but they they don't have as much sugar as wines. The uh, prosecco and the uh, the rosé is absolutely yes. beautiful. But, yeah, yeah. And the thing is, when you start alcohol, it always makes you want to have something sweet with it or, or yes. you know, crisps or savoury things. So, um, yeah. yeah, so you've got to be careful on that. Um, nuts are a great um, little snack, you know, Brazil nuts. And the other thing is, remember portion sizes. Um, portion size the palm of your hand. It's not uh, when people say, oh, can I have some fruit? And I say, absolutely. And they'll say, oh, grapes, grapes are lovely. Um, and they'll buy these, you know, these zipper bags yeah. and they'll eat the whole thing. No, the portion is the palm of your hand. Very, very oh, good. That's very brand. interesting. You do a lot of online um, mentoring, don't you, for people yes. who... And, also, and you said to me, because since I've been taking the Amigas from you, I've noticed a difference with my hair, nails and skin. I mean, that, and also what you said to me about gut health, if you get your gut right, then everything else falls into place. And so the, the, what would you recommend to take for that? Well, there's a, there's a number of things. So with the, the, back to the amigas, the amigas are really important because um, the, the, your body uses them to help form and balance hormones as well. And they reduce, reduce your cravings, but they're brilliant, as you say, for your skin, hair and nails. The yeah. heart health, there's a few different um, prebiotics that put the good bacteria into your gut. Um, there's a doctor in Germany who do, does a wonderful, it's a powder you just put in a glass of water and drink, you know, morning, afternoon and evening. And that helps you to get your hydration levels up. And it's called Brilliant. ProBioColon. And that puts the correct gut bacteria into the gut. It also has glucomannan, which is a fibre and it's soluble fibre. And it has been scientifically proven to help you lose weight because what it does, it helps to naturally make you feel fuller. Now, not bloated, but it makes you feel fuller. And Great. it helps stop you craving um, because it rebalances yeah. everything in your gut. So it's really good. And, and it doesn't matter what type of diet you do, if you get the gut bacteria and you take your omegas and you hydrate, and that's really the, the, the key to getting it working properly. Right. Thank oh, you. I just brilliant. want to say, finish off. Okay. I just Thank you. To finish Thank off. You. Thank you so much. Um, I will still be having my calcium in Baileys. But thank you. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Suzanne. That's Bye, really, darling. And we will put actually on the link where people can contact you. That's thank it. you. Thank you, thank okay, you so thank much. much. Bye. 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 And soon, darling. Well, that was fascinating. And we did deal a little bit with wind. But now yeah. we're dealing with slime. Do we want to talk about that? <laughs> we do. We do. Because our other lovely friend, and we, we love to promote budding artists, don't we? Or artists. But in this case, she is a fantastic artist. You're going to be hearing a lot about her in the future. I've been to see her wonderful exhibition on slime. And it's the fabulous Gabriella Anouk. Oh. Hi. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Welcome to our nest. Welcome. Absolutely. Hello. How are you, Gabriella? I'm good, thank you. How is everyone? Yeah, really good. Gabriella, I'm so excited you're here because I've got lots to talk to you about. We all have. Because I was at your exhibition the other week and it was amazing. Absolutely amazing. And I'm intrigued because you called it slime. And, and actually my, my daughter and granddaughter are obsessed <laughs> with slime. So why, why did you call it slime? I'm fascinated. Well, the, the reason why I called it slime was pretty much each artwork has slime incorporated in it in some way. Um, so the way I created the series was through the use of dripping slime over fruits and vegetables to create those abstract drawings that you saw. So that was the reason why I called it slime. Yeah, slime Amazing. series. <laughs> Absolutely. Where did you get your inspiration from, Gabriella? Where, does it, where did it all start? What were your first pictures? So it was probably around this time last year when I started to feel a bit trapped, a bit lost in my practice. So I started to experiment with slime. Um, the avocado was the first one. It's beautiful, uh, I love it. Oh, thank beautiful. you so much. Yeah, so I just um, started to experiment with slime, dripping it over vegetables and fruits in lockdown because it was, you know, I couldn't leave my house. Um, I just ex used different things I had lying around. So that was the inspiration behind the slime series, yeah. 
Do you do um, workshops, Gabriella? No, no, I, I don't do any or haven't been to any. I don't host any. I, I would, like, I'm, I'm open to doing that, but um, I'm, I'm self-taught, um, yeah. Because oh. I was thinking with, the, with the, the pandemic, you know, like, I think children and teenagers have, it will tell in the next few years that how horrendous this world has been, particularly for them. And when I was thinking about you and I thought, what a great workshop that would be for them, for that kind of age group, do you not think? Yeah, no, definitely. We did um, partner up with a charity called Create Charity at the ah. exhibition. Um, and they actually do all sorts of workshops. So I am looking into potentially collaborating with them in some way. But um, I have a younger sister who's 14 and I can see, you know, firsthand how terrible social media is, the instant gratification. Absolutely. You, know, you walk into a room of kids, they're usually just all on their phones in front yeah. of a TV screen. So they've got phone screens here, TV screen there, iPads. So. I guess what I hope is that they land on one of my social media platforms and see my drawings and the, the, the way they take so long to draw so they can take up to 200 hours to draw and just show them that wow. it takes time to create something, really stick to something, to work at it. And then you have that lovely, satisfying end product that you can... They've got something at the end, haven't they? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've got my... Well, I've got several grandchildren. One of the 11 year old, literally, is, I think she's glued to her phone now. There is mm -hmm. no, you know, she never ever lifts her head. And, and I do make her, you know, I take her places and I make her and she dances and things like that. But I was thinking about what you do and I thought, I think she'd love that. The creativity mm -hmm. is just wonderful. And I think you could take it to, you know, like in schools, it would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, Gabriella, really are, they just, are, they just, are they just drawings that you do? I mean, they're not paintings. Yeah, so I just use colouring pencils. Um, wow. wow. It's a really like controlled, slow process. So that's why I like to use something like slime, because that's so, it's so unnatural and it's so different each time. So it's really disruptive. It's absolutely inspirational what you do. Have you always had this burning desire to express with your coloured pencils? <laughs> um, <laughs> not quite really I've always I've always enjoyed drawing but more with yeah. graphite and since I was really young yeah. it was in, in the last three years that I had started to take on commissions and things and then in the last year is when I really started to focus on coloring pencils and amazing I, I find that yeah I, I do really enjoy them it's uh, and it's that's so accessible as, as we said to young people again it's something they have yeah they're not phones all the time um Tell me, when is your next exhibition coming up, please, so that we can all be there? <laughs> so um, <laughs> we'll probably show the slime series maybe in a couple other destinations, but I'm currently yeah. working on my next series or in the conceptual stages of my next series. But hopefully the next series will be public so everyone can come, like the TikTok people. and, yes. and So it will be a really exciting event. And what I like to do is to, to make it all so you're part of the art. So when when... Um, D, you came to the exhibition. You you might have noticed the food was like similar to the drawings, absolutely, the, and the drinks were the same as the drawings. So I, the next series will have that same kind of fun. Can I, can I make a question then for champagne and chocolate, if I may, Ooh, as well, well, like, yeah. so that yes. we can all share? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you so yeah. much. It's absolutely amazing hearing your journey and seeing your beautiful pictures. And 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 Sherry and everyone else has said, you know the use of today, they forget what to do because yeah. they're on their phones. And that activity, that connection, feeling, colour, shapes, all of those things is so amazing. It's very similar to, you know, when you always have, you have your children with you and you just used to give them colouring books, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. and some pencils when you're out. Now yeah, yeah. you give Forget them their it. phone. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you <laughs> can actually, you can get adult colouring books now, which are rich. Yes, really nice. I know. They're fabulous yes. though, aren't they? And like a huge part of my following, so like 70% of my following are female based followers. And oh, um, we're about wow. to go into the NFT world. And mm -hmm. um, so that's really exciting because it's a male dominated area. So it is. Uh, I was going to ask you about that, Gabriella, because you <laughs> sold some NFT as NFTs, didn't you? 
We don't know what it is. What does it mean? I know. NFT is non fungible <clears throat> somethings. And yeah, so it's, I mean, yeah, it's very early. It's a non fungible token, essentially. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's a unique um, unit of data em employing technology that allows digital content, like digital art, but also uh, it could be a lot of things like um, a tweet. It could be music or something, but it allows it to become logged and authenticated on a cryptocurrency blockchain. Mm. Um, so let you understand that. None of us know, darling, none of us know what you just said. <laughs> oh, no, a different <laughs> language, darling. <laughs> the, main, the, the, the best thing, like the main impact of um, NFTs is just making it easy to, to own and sell digital art. Thank that's, you. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> wonderful. Right. Uh, but that, that's the next <laughs> The next step is I'm going to be doing lots of more um, NFT talks. And because right. I've got such a big female following, I want to empower females to know more about the subject so that's the next thank you step. that's wonderful that's wonderful Gabriella because actually I have been reading uh, jokes aside and I and I mean it took me about a month to get my head around nfts but I'm beginning <laughs> to realize that people are going to own digital stuff more than actual tangible stuff soon so yes. it's very early days but I think we all should get behind <laughs> it um, and as you say especially females because we mm. need to know what, what it's all about. Do you mean to say that you don't physically see people, that it's all online or digital? Do you not, con do you not, like for instance, if you were to do um, a workshop, you would physically be with those people in a room, wouldn't you? Mm. Or would you? That yes, I, I think that's separate, you see. It's very much like cryptocurrency. Yeah. That's what it is, because with cryptocurrency, you own a part of, you own a Bitcoin, which is actually nothing, which is not real, but it is. It's real in the, yeah. in the surreal world, you know, the, the online world. So sure, owning a Bitcoin. Should we just go and have a cup of tea? I've <laughs> no idea. So it's like, um, or it's a good way to like authenticate an, an artwork, for example. So you can have a physical artwork and then an NFT attached to it, which then is like the traceable. One. Yeah, the only one, and, and it's like a, it's like having a letter of authenticity attached yeah. to a piece of artwork. So yes. yeah, it's but again, I'm still, not there, there. sorry, I'm still not there. But anyway, <laughs> no, <dear. I'm>, <laughs> but thank you anyway, dear. I'm we'll trying. Do, we'll do our homework. By the time we yes, come we to your next exhibition, yeah. we'll know, and we will only enter with a bitcoin, just so you know. <laughs> well, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. <laughs> Whatever that means, thank you, darling. <laughs> Thanks, Gabriella. Thank you, Thank you, Gabriella. Gabriella. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks. Bye. 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 How well, I understand all topic. about blockchain. I understand about cryptocurrency, but I still can't get my head around this. Yeah. And what? Yeah, and I'm what beginning bit, to. Bit con? What's a bit no. con? Yeah, that's exactly what it is, dear. A con. So it's, it's not a con. Yeah, a bit. Oh, it's a not bit a, of con, a con, Harriet. Yeah, I know, but you lose it, you have it, and then you lose it, and then it goes back up and down again. We know no, that. That's right. You never really have it. Down. What does it go back up and down in? Well, no, it's, it's a bit like stock in a share, but I bought mine. In, I, in bought one for, I bought one for, um, well, I bought a bit of one for £200, and it's now I worth, it. my yeah. little bit that I bought is now worth about 2500 but... Um, if you bought a Bitcoin, when I was asked to buy a Bitcoin for, with Tony, I was with Tony McHale and we went to an event at um, Metro Bank and it had just opened in London. And there was a guy there who said to all of us at this table, because we went there to try and raise money for a project that we were doing. And there was a guy there <clears throat> called Simon Dixon who started a company called Bank to the Future, which I thought was great. I love that Very name. Good. Um, anyway, he said, if you buy a Bitcoin, he said they're about 25p each. He said, within 10 years, you will be a multimillionaire. Now, if we'd have bought a Bitcoin then, Tony and I, so, if we'd have bought a hundred pounds worth of Bitcoin, we would be worth now about 75 million pounds. <laughs> Why do you think I've been reading about NFTs? <laughs> I don't understand that. No, well, don't, what, don't, what it is, Cherry, so it, it's a virtual coin. It's not a real coin. Mm -hmm. and, and, the, yeah. and the reason why it's so interesting is because people that can't get bank accounts, just say that you're living in, you know, in the desert, you can still have a phone, can't you? Yeah. See? And you can buy Bitcoin on, on your phone. You can get the, the apps or anything else. You can buy a bit of it and you can trade it. So a lot of places, a lot of people buy houses with Bitcoin now. So a house, so Bitcoin. I didn't know that. 
and Bitcoin this year has gone up to, I think it went up at one point to 51,000. So if you bought one for 200 quid only about four or five years ago, it'd be now worth 50 grand. Oh, but how do you get your money out of it? Well, you can because you can you can cash it. It, you, it goes to, you, know, you go to an app called Coinbase and you, you keep your money mm. in there or you keep it in a virtual wallet. It's another thing. It's another thing I'm not even going to go into. Virtual wallet. There is. <laughs> but I, I think I tell you what we should do. We should get Dominic Frisbee. Do you remember Terry Frisbee, the author? Yeah. yeah. Mm. He wrote There's a Girl in My Soup. His son, Dominic, is an actual genius on all of these. He's written quite a few books. But so we, have him we should then. We can get yeah. him. Bring him, on. bring him Great on, bring him on. idea. Get him on. <laughs> yeah, Thank you. Absolutely. Well, well there you go. Would you have yeah. known that? No, definitely That's not. That's incredible, isn't it? Absolutely really extraordinary. Incredible. Yeah, I Amazing. love that. Dee, no, yeah. I have to draw attention, I'm sorry, to what the hell is on your head today. <laughs> well, well, now this is my own creation again, you see. I'm working on my own sort of millinery brand and um, this is another one, work in progress all the time. But um, yes, and it's coming together nicely, or maybe not so nicely. <laughs> well, it looks like a blue nappy. So maybe you're upside well, down. <laughs> maybe you sort of say out. that. Is it a sort of statement piece, darling? Yes, it is a statement piece. There like, we go. Yes. A nappy on your head. Okay. Nappy on my head. This is Talk a nappy on my head. <laughs> okay, <laughs> please, somebody, we cut off the show now. Oh. Wind and nappies on our heads. That's and meditation. Got meditation, just to finish it off. <laughs> what was that? What? And Debbie Arnold. I think it's Sherry. I do, I've gone back to Sherry now. Do you? Or, or, I think you know what, I think Sherry? That. I think it might be D because she keeps blaming everybody. D, else. Yes, she you know does what I'm protest too much. Yeah. Indeed. Oh, it would be, never, it would be, I would never do anything like that. Well, we never, we'll never know now, will we, till whenever? <laughs> <laughs> Have a great weekend, girls. And you. Bye. Bye. Bye.